What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and whatever time it is. Welcome back to another video with your man, Measureholic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 5 of my Spartan Pharaoh campaign for Total War Rome 2 using the Divide Ed Impera Overhaul mod. Today we're going to be continuing our campaign by sieging and assaulting the city of Tyros to our northeastern border. Uh, it has a basic garrison defending it, so this should be a fairly easy battle, but hopefully we can get some nice juicy close-ups of our units. Let's do it. Here you're going to be seeing the Galatians taking the forward line with some slingers in support, and my uh, hectic siege uh, artillery units behind. I had two full ballista units. Way too much for a battle like this, but it is kind of fun to just uh, make the enemy come to you and bombard them. They gotta get a couple hundred kills each. Nothing too crazy, but enough to uh, make them almost worth it. They are very expensive though. Uh, speaking of expensive though, I have my Rodian Slingers at the front here. They're gonna try and get as many kills as they can. The angle isn't ideal for them, but the enemy is moving forward fairly slowly, so um, all in all, they'll deal a lot of HP damage to the enemy at the very least and get some kills in there as well. I ended up having them retreat. Uh, as the enemy sent forward their melee units, pretty much unsupported though. And they sent their citizens forward who got annihilated before they even clashed with my troops. And then they had some medium tier spearmen behind. Um, their spearmen were actually going to do quite well in holding out against my troops because of their large shields and the uh, shield wall formation that they use. But my archers and slingers are going to help out in whittling them down. In addition, my periokoi swordsmen on the left and right flanks are going to be outflanking them very quickly and getting in some nice side charges and rear charges as well. You can see there's a lot of arrows and uh, slings, uh, rocks uh, thrown from slings going overhead. A very chaotic battle and it's probably going to be a little bit of friendly fire but I'm not too worried at, at a, about that at this point. I'm basically just trying to focus on getting some very nice juicy charges on the enemy which we're going to. And even though they are braced and in a good position, um, one of my units can easily wrap around the edge of their units. And so combining that with uh, rear charges from my uh, Galatians here, they're just not really going to stand much of a chance. Eventually their general and slingers catch up to the fight, but it's way too late. Their melee units have already routed, and by that time my artillery had dwindled their numbers. Uh, we get Tyros pretty easily. Okay, so we now have our position solidified in the east. Not only do we have Jerusalem, but we now have Tyros. However, I do want to take Cyprus very shortly after, as it is a uh, city in the same province. And judging by the statistics here, you could also see that my Galatian swordsmen uh, did fantastic. They're going to be a continuous unit that we're going to rely on to do uh, some killing for us. But um, besides that, we didn't really take any casualties at all, at all so that's really good. But following the next couple months, we actually get the Furios and Cleomenes reforms for Sparta. So the Furios reforms, in short, basically give us more allied Greek soldiers, such as Paltas, archers, I believe slingers, and also swordsmen. And then the Cleomenes reforms were specific to Sparta, in that they give us pikemen and uh, reformed hoplites. So that's very exciting. We're basically starting to modernize our army. Um, Sparta eventually realized that pikemen was what basically gave Alexander his great empire and so we're going to be trying to incorporate them into our army rosters and in fact I'm going to give you guys a little brief overview of the specific units we get. I'm just hovering over them fairly quickly and um, we have some allied uh, Peltas and archers here. They're basically Greeks who agree to fight for us. They are part of the Perioikoi uh, class of our population now so we're not going to have a lot of them. Uh, they'll still be useful though. Uh, in addition, we also have uh, some uh, Thurio Spearmen, which will be excellent at dealing with enemy cavalry. So that will be very, very helpful as well. So I'm looking forward to trying to get those in and uh, get them involved. Um, we will have some auxiliaries such as Judean Spearmen getting involved as well. And then, like I said, our allied Thurio Spear uh, Swordsmen, I should say. Our Spartan Hoplites are basically done now. It's time to modernize our army. Uh, it's time for the pike to take its place in our armies. Um, it is going to be kind of sad. I am going to try and reform my hoplites very briefly. Um, 
they do have better attack and better armor than the basic hot plates that we have now but you can see where this is going um we have cavalry available to us now as well some allied furios cavalry they're going to be very helpful uh, they're a very good skirmisher unit they're not going to be doing too much on the charge but they will help give us some morale penalties against the enemy but i did try reforming my hoplites just to see how they would do in battle and i probably should have given you guys a close-up of these units but i didn't apologies for that um but i only use these troops in one battle and i'll tell you why i didn't show you them very shortly but uh in the meantime though i was doing a little bit of a strategic overview here just to see what political parties control what territory Basically, our dynasty, the Agia dynasty, controls Egypt and all of Greece, or at least our, all of our possessions in Greece. And then the uh, Europontids, or Europontids, yeah, Europontid dynasty holds uh, basically um, our possessions in the east, such as Jerusalem and Tyro. So I do need to be a little bit careful about how I manage my loyalty with the other factions. In fact, you'll see me pay for it later. But anyway. Uh, we're doing a very, very cheeky assault against uh, the Egyptians in the west. They still have this fishing village out here to the west. Uh, Parait... Par I can't even pronounce that. I'm going to say Paratinium. Paratine? Wow. Anyway, the bottom line is, is that Cleomenes is leading a very mobile, sword-heavy army against the Egyptians over here. And if he screws this up, he could end up getting himself killed. So this could be a very risky assault. But... Let's do it. Alright, here we are outside Paration. I'm going to call it Paration. I don't care if I'm wrong. That's what I'm going with. And uh, here's a little showcase of our Greek units. Here is our Thurios Cavalry. Fairly decent cavs. They're not heavily armored whatsoever. In fact, I would say they're low armored as are our uh, swordsmen here who are also allied Greek swordsmen. But they have massive shields. Um, they go almost the entire length of the body, so that is going to help them do fairly well in battle. Uh, it'll keep them alive against melee troops. However, they are going to suffer against archers. Um, not so much against slingers, but a little bit if it's a flank shot. But archers and skirmishers are going to have a field day against these lightly armed units, so I do need to be a little bit careful with them. And then for the rest of Cleomenes' army, we have Egyptian mercenaries uh, on the flank. Only a couple units of them, not too many. They're decent. But they're not as good as our mainland troops over here, the Galatian swordsmen. The Galatians are going to win us so many battles moving forward, it's not even funny. And Cleomenes, in his reform, sees just how useful they are, and he's trying something very different. In addition, we also have some Egyptian uh, native archers in the rear, followed by our brand new Spartan pikemen. We unfortunately only have two units of pikemen at this stage, and Cleomenes is in the rear with his hoplites. Um, they're not going to be too involved in this battle, but as our campaign uh, continues, we will be using them more and more. But they look fantastic. I absolutely love the look of them. Hopefully you guys do as well, uh, especially while we're using this reshade and graphical settings. Hopefully it looks decent. And then, uh, of course, up here in the rear is Cleomenes III himself, leader of the reforms that the Spartans are currently undergoing. Although he is not our king yet, he is just the heir. So, um... He's trying to modernize our army, and in doing so, he's bringing a very sword-heavy and mercenary-heavy army to deal with the Egyptians here. I haven't done this before, so it's going to be a very interesting battle, and it's going to define how we uh, adjust our military moving forward. Attacking this village, uh, fishing village, though, they have a uh, large, well, not large, but a fairly decent-sized uh, navy close by. And so they're going to be coming to land on our left hand flank here. Thankfully I have my cavalry in position to come and deal with them fairly easily. I am going to send in some Furio swordsmen to support them as well since there are some melee troops getting involved. And while that's happening the Egyptians from the town are actually pushing out and uh, we're going to have to charge across our line. I might have given the attack order a little bit too early. Uh, there was a lot of space in between my troops and theirs on the right hand flank or at the top of the screen here. So maybe I should have waited a bit longer, but um, I'm basically just trying to stop the Egyptians from reinforcing their naval units on our left hand flank. And it's going to work for the most part. Um, they're not really going to be able to send any reinforcing troops that way. However, the naval troops do last a lot longer than what I anticipated. I cut out a lot of footage for this battle. It ended up taking about 30 minutes, I believe. Uh, which is fairly decent length battle. 
Um, and it's gonna be basically because we don't really have any units that are killers. Which is funny because our whole army is based on swordsmen. But our swordsmen that we have aren't really killing the enemy very quickly. Um, they're not overly aggressive like the Germanic Axemen or something like that. The Galatians are quite aggressive, but when compared to the Greeks, um, the Greeks just don't really match up to them. And my Galatians are attacking the enemy from the front here, who are all in their uh, shield wall formation, so they're going to last a very long time against my swordsmen. In the rear, I have uh, my Greek swordsmen outflanking the enemy. However, um, they're just not going to be killing them quick enough, and so we're actually going to lose a lot of troops due to the slow grind nature of this fight. I do try to micromanage my cavalry behind the enemy's lines, and that's going to be really helpful in dealing a lot of morale damage. And we finally uh, win the battle on the beaches over there. However, it is getting towards the end of the battle now, and my troops aren't really going to have all that much effect, uh, or at least not a lot of time to have an effect on the battle once they transfer, uh, transfer away from the beaches to the main battle. We do have the enemy surrounded though, and it's looking like we're gonna win. However, it's looking like we're also taking quite a few casualties. I'm actually bringing up my pikemen now. I'm even gonna get my uh, general Cleomenes involved here uh, very shortly. Basically, the problem is we're just not killing them. We have good troops, even better troops than them, but their formation is just making sure that their spearmen survive for quite a while. And it's really going to slow us down. And um, like I said, we're just going to suffer for it. There isn't really anything we did wrong necessarily in this battle. Uh, at least not in my opinion. Maybe I should have used my relations to flank. But at the end of the day, we do get the victory. Cleomenes' reformed army does work. But to what extent? Let's see. And this is where we will see to what extent it works by looking at these statistics basically my Galatians did relatively well but not as well as they should have um, you can tell that they attacked the enemy from the front my Egyptian archers did terrible my cavalry did okay um, but it still wasn't very good and uh, I actually ended up losing quite a few of my Galatians my Greek swordsmen even some of my Egyptian swordsmen units took some casualties so across the board pretty much we took losses and none of our units really stood out when it came to killing the enemy. So I'm going to have to look for killers in my army moving forward. I know it might sound a little bit funny, but basically I need shock troops. I need troops that are going to have a solid impact when they engage the enemy. And so I loot the town that we take and then I recruit some pikemen and an elephant unit uh, to our army. Now we can finally recruit elephants in our uh, little western province here of Libya. However, the Egyptians have a full stack army to our south. In addition, they also have a half stack to the west. And they both attack me immediately after. So this is what I was saying in that the assault on this town was very risky. Uh, I knew there were some Egyptian armies out and about. I was hoping they wouldn't attack so quickly. But they are. We have no time to recover. Hardly any time to set up any defenses. Cleomenes here might end up losing his life and his brand new reformed army. We'll see. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to begin this battle by sailing forth with my cavalry. I knew the Egyptians had some elephant units, and I also knew that they had some cavalry. I wanted to try and isolate them and destroy them before they could get too involved in the battle here. Um, unfortunately, my cavalry was sent out to the wrong location, and the elephants were coming in from the right-hand side along the coast. So, um, I was still trying to hunt down the enemy generals to try and snipe them a little bit here. Uh, probably a bad call on my part. I mismanaged my cavalry as well. My micromanage was pretty terrible uh, at the start of this battle. Um, so I'm going to have to try and sacrifice some units, especially some of my lower tier garrison units of cavalry that I sent out. And I'm basically going to try and rotate the rest of my skirmisher cav to try and intercept the Egyptian elephants before they can get stuck into my infantry. However, we are going to get attacked from at least two sides here. Uh, the Egyptians are coming out from the coast and their larger armies coming in from inland so this is going to be a real struggle. The elephants do get sent ahead without too much support though so my cavalry will get to engage them. However, uh, the Egyptians react fairly quickly and do send in some cavalry to support. But I'm basically trying to micromanage and draw the elephants around while my horsemen 
have time to throw their spears at them. In the meantime, uh, the enemy general who started this fight on his own actually has already charged in and is engaging my units in the center. He uh, triggered some of the traps, so hopefully that's going to help uh, kill him off pretty quick while the reinforcing armies come and get involved. Um, but you can see it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game with the elephants. In the meantime that that's happening, uh, the Egyptian left-hand army has sent their cavalry against us. They're charging into our pikes, which is always a bad idea, however, um, don't be fooled, my pikemen are going to suffer some heavy casualties, and you'll see why very soon. On the right-hand flank, I have my Galatians waiting to engage the enemy uh, from behind when they engage my pikes. However, that's not going to work out the way I want it, at least not initially, which I'll show you shortly. But in the meantime, we've actually uh, pretty much dealt with the uh, enemy elephants. We ended up wiping them out before they could engage my infantry, so that's that's a win in my book. Um, we took out probably the most lethal weapon against Spartan troops, which is elephants. Uh, however, the second most lethal weapon, skirmishes, has annihilated my pikemen on this left-hand flank. Uh, there are archers and there's uh, peltas are just bombarding our troops constantly. And despite them being in a defensive formation, they are basically digging away and eating up uh, all my really good units over there, which sucks. So to try and help that, I sent up my Egyptian swordsmen on a flank around the left-hand side of the enemy. I'm trying to focus on killing the enemy archers and skirmishers since they have a lot of ammo. Uh, and I also have one last cavalry unit that I'm trying to get involved in the fight. He's going to do some charges on the enemy skirmishers. We're going to run down a few of their units, but not a lot, really. Um, so basically, I'm just going to have to suck it up on that left-hand flank. The right-hand flank was holding very nicely, though. And finally, I can now outflank the enemy's army. Uh, with my Galatians here, just as I had planned. The uh, enemy army is being held up by my pikemen unit here. They're doing very, very well. And then I have three full stacks of Galatians coming in from the rear. In addition, I finally send around our mercenary elephants we bought. Uh, this took quite a while for me to send them in. I wanted to make sure that the enemy's army was fully committed before doing so. But once I did, it was just a, a massacre. The enemy uh, army over here routed in massive numbers. Their pikes just didn't have any formation whatsoever. You can see all their pikes are stuck up in the air, just twiddling around. Uh, hundreds of their troops ended up routing it all at once. And we basically route an entire enemy army based off one elephant charge. That's pretty incredible, and we're gonna spend a lot of time trying to chase down these troops to make sure that they don't escape and live to fight another day. However, on the other side of the battlefield, things are not looking as good. The enemy has still annihilated my pikemen that were on the left hand side and I'm now trying to rotate troops uh, to the center and to the left hand flank to try and hold them back. Uh, in addition I'm also sending my galatians and my elephants to try and flank the enemy army. The thing is though I can't rush them in too quickly otherwise I'll just turn around and deal with them before they uh, continue attacking my main defenses. Speaking of flanking though, the Egyptians actually sent troops uh, along the northern side of town, along the beach. A very uh, cheeky move, a very bold move, and it would have worked if I had not seen it coming and I actually already uh, positioned my archers in a position where they could try and help defend our town square. And they actually did a very good job of it. I even got some rear charges in here with uh, my uh, archers. You can see that it's kind of hard to tell who's who since they're all wearing very similar clothing, if not the exact same. But basically, my troops are the ones there that are outflanking theirs. While that's been happening though, I'm trying to send my Galatians to deal with the enemy center here. They come up the L-shaped style street and have attacked our uh, pikemen front on. Our pikemen are holding quite nicely and so are some of my garrison troops that are there. However, they are starting to die because they're engaging the very good pikemen that the um, enemy have to offer here. So I am going to try and push forward here, which is why I'm giving attack orders while my Galatians is coming from behind. Um, whenever you're using pikemen and flanking units, I always recommend you try to time pushing with your pikemen or hoplites uh, when your enemies, I mean, when your friendlies are going to be attacking from behind. You always want to try and. Um, you always want to try and time it to be accurate. Uh, speaking of timing though, my elephants come in here just as an enemy uh, unit ends up routing. Uh, 170 men shattered and then shortly after the majority of them get killed by getting stampeded. 
However, I still have to continue using my elephants as much as I can to route the rest of the enemy troops. And it works amazingly. Uh, we didn't even lose a single elephant. And because of the outflanking we did, the enemy army routes en masse. Cleomenes III has won a massive victory here. He's annihilated two Egyptian armies and given us full solidified control of Egypt. We're really making progress now. And here are the statistics for the battle. 6,900 Egyptians deployed against my 4,400 Spartans. We lost a lot of men. It was not an easy victory by any means. Uh, however, you can see why we won. My Galatians and my uh, elephants just did absolute wonders. 700 kills for a single Galatian unit and my elephant unit. Like, that's an insane uh, just amount of death that they inflicted. A lot of economical damage that they did as well for relatively cheap units, although the elephants are fairly expensive. Uh, I then had to chase down the enemy army that did escape, though. But I'm just going to order was over. It's no big deal. And with that, we completely uh, solidify our hold on the western side of our uh, possessions here. The Egyptians still have a tiny little army I'm going to go order resolve against. And they also have a small uh, village to the southwest in, uh, in southwestern Libya. But I, I'm not really going to worry about that. It's down by Serenaka, and it's also on the other side of my desert nomadic allies. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're basically out of Egypt entirely. And while that's been happening, I've been sending King Arius against a small uh, Egyptian force up here in Palmyra. Um, although it isn't uh, a massive force, uh, I mean, it is almost a full stack. However, um, when I say when it's a small force, I mean the army itself is not very good. It's basically a few melee auxiliary troops combined with a lot of uh, archers and slingers and pelters. Um, it's basically a skirmishing force which I sent against us. However, they actually did pretty good against us. I really underestimated them here. They ended up dealing a lot of damage to my Spartan Hoplites and my Galatians, which is not good. And it basically showcased to me the single biggest issue with my armies is that um, we don't have proper mobility to deal with um, units like these. And so I'm really going to try and focus on having good cavalry in all of my armies moving forward. Even against the Egyptians, who are typically a uh, pike and relatively heavy style faction. Um, now they're starting to use auxiliary units because they're running out of uh, good solid pikemen to fight us with. So I'm going to have to try and focus on them moving forward. In the meantime, I'm creating a navy at Tyrus to help us take uh, Cyprus or Salamis up there. You can see to the top left. It has a very small garrison and only a general unit in the area. So I'm trying to do it pretty quickly, uh, but I do want a decent navy to escort uh, King Arius' army. In addition, King Arius is going to join in the uh, reforms of Cleomenes III in that he's getting rid of his hoplites in exchange for pikemen now. And this, this decision was not easy. It took me a while to really consider it uh, since my hoplites are really uh, professional veteranized troops. However, at the end of the day, a veteran unit of hoplites is almost certainly going to use against a basic unit of pikemen. Or at least not lose. They'll take a lot of casualties. And so, if anything, I may as well get started on getting my pikemen to be veterans now. So, King Arius is going to start using pikemen and Syrian heavy archers, which would be very cool. However, in the meantime, the Egyptians sent out their rem remnants of their navy against my own. I managed to recruit a few mercenary ships in the meantime. Uh, to try and defend uh, Tyros against this naval threat. Uh, I nearly ordered a resolve, but I didn't trust it, so I ended up fighting the battle manually. Uh, we win, however, we do lose a couple of our admirals, and we're going to see why this is a big deal shortly here. Um, one of them was basically just a, ge a generic kind of admiral general. However, the other one was actually the leader of the Garusia. Um these are basically the aristocratic class of Spartan society at, at this point, and we lose a lot of loyalty with them. They go down to minus nine. I end up basically doing some favors for them to try and uh, increase their loyalty. However, use, losing their leader and a general that was part of their faction, that's uh, really monumental in how much impact it can have on their loyalty. So I'm going to be trying to monitor that situation very closely, and I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful in the future 
but how I use my admirals and generals. However, now we're actually going to see a naval battle because the Egyptians come back against our uh, transport fleet here, which uh, thankfully has some escort ships with it. The Egyptians did not like those trying to send elephants up to King Arius, and so they're actually going to uh, try and stop us just outside of Tyros. So here we are with a naval battle. Okay, so this is going to be a fairly quick naval battle, as are all the D uh, battles, really. Um, unfortunately, there's just nothing you can do, really, especially when they send ships like this. There's some transport ships of their own involved in this uh, naval battle. So I'm actually going to rush ahead with all of my uh, naval forces and just annihilate them very, very quickly. They lose a general and a unit of soldiers for nothing, basically. And then, because their navy was a reinforcing unit, I'm actually just going to instantly rush towards them and try and get them before they manage to spread out and uh, get in a proper battle formation. Thankfully, my navy was able to move very quickly, and then we uh, also were able to manage to double team a lot of their ships. And because we ran uh, them basically two at a time across the board, they lose their ships instantly before they can even do a lot of damage against us. And they ended up routing on mass. With that, we annihilate the Egyptian navy. Here are the statistics. If you want to see, we basically lost like uh, a couple guys for wiping out the rest of the Egyptian navy. Which is very uh, useful. Almost the Egyptian navy. They do have one ship that escapes, but they're basically done. However, just as things are starting to look amazing uh, against Egypt, the Nabataeans crawl out of the desert and feel like they have something to say about it. They declare war on us out of nowhere. Um, this is a very big problem. They have units that are going to be very effective against my own. They have great cavalry. They have uh, great camels. They have light infantry that will be hard for my heavy troops to catch. This could mean disaster, especially since it looks like the Egyptians basically paid them to stab us in the back here and attack us from behind. However, thankfully the Medewi to the south are involved in fighting them as well. I'm not too sure why we are friendly with the Medewi, but they're not an ally of ours by any means. But I'll take it. Screw it. Get involved. Come help us out. So basically, I have to put all my campaign on uh, eradicating the Egyptians from Cyprus on hold. And King Arius... Uh, Cleomenes III and our garrison army at Alexandria are all being diverted to crush the Nabataeans very, very quickly. The faster we do it, the less likely that the Egyptians will be able to have time to bounce back and deal us any damage uh, from this very cheeky diplomatic move. Um, there is a lot of fog of war in the Nabataean territory, so I am going to take a risk here. I'm actually just going to send King Arius forward with his new reformed pikeman army. I'm not too sure if I'm going to try to wait for Cleomenes to catch up with his swords. Um, it's a very risky maneuver if I do it, but we will have to wait until the next time to see if I do it or not. Either way, this threat must be dealt with. So until then, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I shall see you in the next one.